Alright people, it's the Boxing Genius here and today we will do a pre-fight breakdown of Desmarinas vs. Inouye which is sort of a an overlooked fight because I think everyone's waiting for Inouye vs. Uh, Casimero or Inouye vs. no, they already fought Casimero or they already fought but I think everyone's waiting for Inouye vs. Casimero that's why they're kind of uh, underestimating Desmarinas which is a tough fighter but uh, we will give a fair assessment today. I know Desmarinas is a friend of a former sparring partner that I had here in the Philippines. So um, there, that guy can vouch for the power of Desmarinas, the speed of Desmarinas. And so I don't want to overlook anything here. Anyway, let's get right into it. And we'll first talk about the ability of Desmarinas to go in and out and use distance deception to his advantage in order to keep his opponent cautious. Okay, so over here, you'll see him extending his front foot all the way out while being actually on the back foot which makes it tough for the opponent to figure out what he's planning to do because from this position you are in a defensive position but you're also in a defensive position in the sense that you are sitting on the back foot you are far away from your opponent but at any time during this position you can also step in to throw a hook which this Marinas did here and then when he threw that hook, he had a very proactive defense. He already saw the counter coming, so he ducked down. And then he threw a body shot in return. Boom. Okay. Now we'll talk about it in a way later, but I just want to show you guys some of the things that go, that's going on here. So over here, you'll see the same thing. Although you can see his front leg, he's going in and out, extending that front leg all the way out. Keeping his opponent cautious of throwing. All right, so that, ex that extension of the front leg really forces your opponent to think twice about stepping in or going in because you are pretty much in a defensive stance while being in, in an offensive position as well because at any time you can step in and you can counter them. Now let's talk about lead foot. Lead foot dominance, which it's sort of a tricky question in this fight for Desmarinas really because if he decides to dominate the lead foot and step on the outside of the lead foot, it's gonna be, it can be good or bad, okay? If he decides to go inside the lead foot of any way, it can be good or bad as well. So you have to choose your poison. Which one should he pick? I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on this and let's just look at some clips. So for this first one, you'll see him throwing a left uppercut and then a right hook, okay? Uppercut, right hook, he steps out. Successful process, okay, great. He was able to step out of the lead foot of his opponent. But what's the problem here? His opponent, or he didn't step out far enough, which means that his opponent can only take this lead foot, take it to the side, and now he's back in a dominant position, okay? So if you look at that right there, he threw a left uppercut, right hook, and then for a moment, he was able to step out of the lead foot of his opponent. But because he didn't step out far enough, now his opponent was able to extend his front leg. And he was able to redeem that lead foot positioning. So right now, you see Desmarinas, the feet of Desmarinas is trapped on that left foot of his opponent. Which makes it hard for him to pivot away far enough to the point where he won't be able to get hit with the left hook or with the right hand. So over here, you'll see him instead getting hit after he pivoted out which apparently you would assume that uh, he wouldn't be able to get hit after he pivots out you would assume that he's already safe but because the opponent was able to redeem this lead for dominance just by stepping out a little bit on the left leg now he gets caught with a right hand so see it for yourself we'll play through a loop bang all right pivots out you think he's safe right uh-uh boom bitch so there we go here's the second one let's take a look at the second one real quick so over here you'll see him duck down okay stepping out of the lead foot of his opponent but over on this part you'll see him stepping not only to the but not only beside the left foot of his opponent but in front so his right foot right now is ahead it's going forward as opposed to going sidewards, which makes it hard for his opponent to redeem that lead foot position. So, on this side, or on this instance, 
that same problem that you encountered a while ago will not happen anymore because he went ahead and his left foot went forward as he pivoted out, making it hard for his opponent to time him and catch him with the right hand. Boom, okay? So he was able to avoid that right hand in that particular situation, or in that example, I should say. So same thing goes for this. He's on the outside again of uh, the leaf foot of his opponent. But over here, he decides to lean back a little bit, making that slight adjustment, and now he wasn't able to get hit with uh, the left hook or the right hand. Okay, now this poses some problems for Dasmarinas because in a way has quick feet. Okay, so if he decides to do that same thing where he pivots away after he throws his combinations, there is a possibility that in a way will be able to catch up to this and do a slight adjustment on his lead foot as well, create an angle for himself, and then trap this right foot of this Marinas right here. So he can trap this and he can throw a check hook, a hook while, while this Marinas is pivoting out or a right hand over here. So it poses a couple of problems for Dustin Marinas in the sense that he can be timed when he does this too much. Okay, against a fighter like, who's this guy? Guerfell? Guerfi? Against a guy like Guerfi, he can do it, and in a way, it's quite dangerous. Let's talk about the body work, which he's really good at, by the way. And he's really good at this because he has that element of one motion counter punching instilled in his strategies and in his style. So. For this one, he'll throw a left uppercut and then a right hook. As he ducks down, you'll see him countering with the uppercut. The last time we saw, <clears throat> the last time we saw someone counter like this, it was in the time of Mike McCallum. So, let's first take a look at this. As he ducked down, you can see him sneaking in a body shot as he ducked down on that part. Last time we saw some greats do this was Salvador Sanchez and uh, Mike McCallum. Not a lot of people can sneak in that that kind of punch now. There's because it's awkward, okay? Ducking down to the right as you throw the left is awkward. And if you're an orthodox, ducking down to the left and then throwing a right uppercut to the body, it's quite awkward. You guys can try it out, okay? So now let's not just look at one body punch. Let's actually look at some uh, barrage of punches, barrage of body shots. Well, this is another one shot. So he throws the right hook, kaboom, bam. He ducks down again as he threw the right hook. Where is his lead foot here? His lead foot stepped onto the outside. And the thing that I really like about Dustin Marinho is, is even though he steps on the outside, he never gets overconfident in the sense that he doesn't really, um, or he really pays close attention to the check hook and return. Okay, so even though he already established the lead foot positioning right here, he is still responsible enough to duck down and avoid this left hook. And I think this can be really helpful against a guy with, or against a guy like Inouye who has a very quick check hook. He can check hook, he can do a check hook and then a pivot, he can do a check hook while moving back, he can do a check hook while planting his feet. And I think this will really help Desmarinas to kind of figure out what Inouye is doing because he has very good head movement, okay? Desmarinas has a really efficient way of uh, throwing his, or defending himself after he throws his punches. So here's the last one. No, this is not it. Now, here's the thing, folks. A lot of people are talking about lead for dominance in Southpaw versus Orthodox. I am here to debunk that myth. I'm here to debunk that myth. And the reason why I don't necessarily look for lead for dominance whenever I'm fighting a or uh, orthodox or an opposite stance is because you also have to look at their best assets and the best asset of in a way is obviously the left hook and so if you try to exit on the left side of in a way he can time you he can time you contrary to popular belief if you step out of the lead foot of your opponent it's not necessarily that you'll dominate the, the fight, okay? So here's the thing. I want Das Marinas to, if Das Marinas will have any chance, number one, work the body. Number two, go in and out. And then number three, go in the pocket every once in a while. I think uh, his ability to fight in the pocket is a little bit better than in a way, although if you look at some sparring footage of in a way, he is pretty good on the inside as well. But 
I think the defense of Desmarinas on the inside is a little bit tighter because he has that ability to just see shots coming. Okay, he's able to duck down, he's able to move his head, he's able to use footwork as well. So here it is. Here's what I want uh, Desmarinas to do if he's going to win this fight. Instead of trying to dominate the lead foot, I would just suggest him, yes, you can step out of the lead foot in a way, but always exit on the left side or yeah, on his left side, on the right side of anyway. Always exit on that side. Why is that? Because although he's susceptible for the uppercut when he does it, he's able to exit pretty safely and he's able to throw his punches left and right, even though uh, he's exiting on that side. Now, with that being said, there is a possibility of Desmarinas going inside the leaf foot of Inouye, which can sort of trap him in the sense that uh, he's closer to the left hook of Inouye. But I really think that's the only way he can beat him. Uh, body shots, always stay, always exit on the right side of Inouye. Never exit on the left because he can time you with a, a very sneaky left hook. But hey, if he establishes that lead foot dominance, I think it'll, it is acceptable to kind of pivot every once in a while like he did over here. I think it is acceptable to do this every once in a while. Okay, if he uh, really, he, if he's really certain that he, he has already established the position of the lead foot he can pivot out every once in a while but as much as possible try to avoid that left hook and all right let's move on to the prediction i'm not going to show any clips of in a way simply because i think we've watched too much of in a way let us go on with the prediction i'm filipino okay i'm filipino okay if you don't understand that this Marinos is a close friend from a former sparring partner that I had before. But let's be honest, the level is just way too high. But here's the thing, the same went for fucking uh, Pacquiao when he fought Lej the same is The same goes, or the same thing applied when Casimero fought Tete. Tete was told that, or Tete was said to have better competition than Casimero. Like, come on bro, we've had underdogs time and time and time again. However, I really think that uh, right now, Casimero is the ultimate kryptonite for, in a way. Desmarinas has the defense, Desmarinas has the footwork, Desmarinas has the speed, okay? But he doesn't have the, he doesn't have that style that can beat a guy like in a way. Um, I just don't think that is. So my prediction is in a way will probably beat him by decision or by stoppage. I don't see Desmarinas going down. If he gets hurt, the referee will stop it. It's not gonna be a knockout where you'll see Desmarinas on the canvas, uh, unconscious, I don't see that happening, okay? I see it like a decision, or if he gets tagged with a good shot from in a way, in a way will probably uh, trap him in a corner and then the referee will step in. But again, uh, there's that objective side of me, I'm called the boxing genius, I'm objective with everything that I say. There's that side of me that uh, says in a way is, is going to win for sure. And then there's that other side of me that's a little bit biased. And there's that side of me that is excited because I think, you know, there's a possibility for an upset for this Filipino fighter that we have. But if Dasmarinas doesn't win this fight, hey, we still have Casemiro. It's, it's going to be a better storyline, right? If, if, does Mourinho still lose us? There's going to be a better storyline for the upcoming fight between Casemiro versus Inoue, which is kind of hard because Inoue is in top rank. So I hope, hopefully, the promotions get uh, get get set and that fight can happen soon. However, Casemiro has an upcoming fight with Rigondeaux, so I'm going to make another video on that. Subscribe so you can check it out. I'm going to make one on Donaito versus Obali as well. So subscribe and wait for it. See you guys soon. Peace.